All right, we are recording, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start the webinar today. This is the Welcome Friends to the Stealth Persuasion, Capturing the Emotions and Money of Your Website Visitors. And tonight I'm going to be going over some things that I've never, ever uh, revealed in public, so that's going to be really interesting. And remember, this will be recorded, and also for your convenience, you'll get the slides to download so you can follow along, because I'm going to be showing you real copy examples, so you want to look at that. Plus, the extra uh, thing I'm going to be going through here with crowdfunding um, it's going to be very interesting. Crowdfunding language of the most successful campaigns. It's very cool. All right, and you can see me there. That's me down there with my beautiful girl, Vicky. We're sitting on the couch together in Virginia Beach. She's playing games on the computer, but she's always learning new stuff as we do these webinars as we go along. Two and a half years now, she's been sitting by my side with these at these webinars, and I really appreciate that. She's looking good. She's looking fine, and we're having a good time tonight. All right, let's get right into it. What is persuasion content exactly? Well, it's emotional words, it's customer-focused words, and especially it's words that educate, and we're also uh, identifying benefits that really matter most to your particular target market, and it's not the ones you typically are going to be. You may be really surprised at that if you um, haven't sat in on this webinar before. You'll be uh, quite excited about what kind of benefits that really matter to most people. All right, look at this number here. I know it's big, and uh, I don't like big numbers. They're very scary. And this is 644-plus million websites. And uh, this is a little old. It's probably about two years old. But that's how many active websites there are on the web at any particular time. And that may scare you. And that sounds like an awful lot of competition. And I know that a lot of people think, well, how in the world am I supposed to get ahead with that kind of depth and of competition. How can I stand out? Well, the good news is, and Google's on your side on this one, and that's the really good news, is that 99% of these sites have content that really stinks. It's dull. It's boring. It's too hypey. It's too salesy. It doesn't do anything. It turns people off. The other 1% touch the hearts and minds of its visitors. It educates them. It talks about their needs. It, feels, it offers solutions, and it identifies their pain. And that's what we're going to go over tonight the key to uh, touching the hearts and minds of your visitors so that they don't even see it coming and and you're able to sell products and service to them over and over again and make lifelong customers. Many of these sites, they tell compelling stories and they offer content that relates to three key things that I'm going to go over on this webinar that matter most to these people. And these sites make money, the ones that have really good content, and better yet, they change lives. And I know that's exactly why you're here tonight to help change lives of the people that you want to help the most. All right, who am I? I'm Colin Martin. Most of you know me already, but if you don't, I'm the strapping young lad sitting there next to my Jaguar in this beautiful picture. And uh, if uh, you're familiar with me at all, you know I'm uh, Tom Antion, the right-hand man I was. I worked there for six years. I recently gone out on my own for like last year and a half or so. And uh, you can see Tom there. It's no fun to work there at all, but uh, and I wouldn't tell him that. But we have a lot of fun, and I learned a lot from him. And being his marketing manager was an education uh, that I could never really purchase. I mean, he does have a mentor program, years do, but being there every day, immersing myself eight hours a day, and then working on my own stuff at night was something that was just an incredible learning experience that I could never duplicate for any amount of money. And I'm going to use that to show you how to better yourself as copywriters tonight. And I was also the former head instructor at his Internet Marketing Training Center in Virginia, the only school of its kind in the entire world offering a certificate in Internet Marketing. I was the head instructor there, and uh, which makes me completely unqualified to do this webinar tonight. Just kidding. Obviously, what I am qualified to do is uh, write copy. And I'm the top. I'm in the top 1% of all creative content copywriters on Elance. That's out of a million-plus members. And I rated... Top 1%, this is their testing um, software. It's nothing that I just created myself. You have to actually test on Elance and take their test, and they put you in this uh, different category. And, of course, I'm pretty good at Internet marketing, too, top 10%. And ever since I got back from my camping trip last year, um, my, my 10 weeks in the wilderness, my gem hunting trip, I've become a master sales letter copywriter, writing sales letters for many of the top gurus in history, plus many of my clients. Plus, lots of Tom Antion's sales letters that a lot of people thought he wrote, and I actually wrote them, and I'm very proud of that because most of those have made 
near millions of dollars in sales over the years, and I'm really happy that I can be a part of that. All right, what can you expect from this webinar? Enough about me. My promise to you tonight is I'm going to show you the words that push emotion of your visitors. I'm also going to explain what are the benefits that people really care about most. I just touched on that a minute ago, but you're going to be really surprised with that. Also, how to crush sales resistance right from the very start so that you don't have to worry about trying to uh, cure the sales resistance all the way through the rest of your material. Do it in the very beginning. And here's the biggie. Eight copywriting tricks that will triple conversions on all of your sales letters, websites, emails, anything where you want to make more money and persuade your readers. And I've never revealed this anywhere uh, until tonight. Also, how educating your visitors will build customers for life. And that's, of course, what we want on the Internet. We want people that will bomb us every single time. And, of course, a live Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, we'll save them basically to the end, and I'll answer them. And I will stay here until all questions have been answered so no one's left behind. All right? And I'm going to show you my three secret formulas, plus a lot more, uh, my super awesome benefits identifier formula, also the wee wee calculation formula, which has nothing to do with going to the bathrooms, trust me on that, and also the love conflict secret formula. And these are going to be very interesting uh, formulas. Plus, along the way through the webinar, you might see this little picture of this smile face, which is actually a real picture of me taken at a mall photo booth. And it will alert you to a super stealthy trick. So if you see the smile face, I want you to perk up and uh, take a note, write it in blood, whatever you got to do, and uh, make sure that, that um, you pay attention to that particular trick because it's a good one. All right. Most people fear writing. Um, I heard it said that uh, writers don't just write. They actually open a vein up and let loose all their emotions on paper where the world can see it, and that can be a little scary. And I know that all of us here tonight have someplace writing material. Where we can't be on the Internet if we're not writing. So there's, we have to write our web content and our emails and our ebooks and our article marketing. We're always writing. And regardless of the changing technology, the written word is still the persuasive element here. That's why it's so important. Whether it was papyrus or stone tablets or printed books or the Internet or apps, everything still is, has to be written. And that can cause a great fear in people. But I want to promise you that this will be very easy tonight because I'll give you exact examples and point out ways that you can review the way you write, break writer's block, and write down stuff that really matters to the people that you care about most. Well, I care about, who I care about most is my community. Everyone on here tonight, plus, plus hundreds of other people that I work with on a, on a uh, personal basis. And I want to reward you for your time tonight. I want to thank you for here, first of all, and, and, and investing your time because it really means you're serious about your business. But I want to reward you with um, a freebie, and the freebie is I'm giving everyone tonight that was live uh, on the call here my 166-page page ebook, Stealth Persuasion, and I'll be mailing that out tomorrow to everyone. But one lucky person right now is going to get a super free gift, and it's called My Little Black Book of Autoresponders. And I know many of you won this because I keep giving it away in multiples uh, over almost any webinar that you're on. I'll give this away. And the deal is, is that we go ahead and put in the chat box, just, yes, I want it, and kind of beg for it a little bit. I'm going to give it away to one lucky person. I'll just pick it random. I'm not going to be uh, judgmental or anything. But the harder you beg, the more your chances of getting it. And the little book of email autoresponders are 10 email templates that practically write themselves that, you, uh, that are triggered off by autoresponders that will send people back to your products and services in droves. Wow, look at all the people going crazy here tonight. Man, I can't even keep track of this. Um, yes, I want it. I need it. I'm desperate? Really? Okay, pick me, pick me, pick me. Okay, I like that. Please give to Louise. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, Louise, I go writing this down on a, on a newspaper. Louise Scott, I'm going to give that to you. Congratulations. Louise Scotty. Okay. And also... Uh, yeah, she says, ha, I beat you guys. <laughs> so that's great. Um, you know what? I'm going to give somebody else. I, I usually just don't pick. Pick me, pick me. I really like that. That's so cute. Abby Reed. I'm going to give you the autoresponders too. 
So I really appreciate you guys being here. And um, stay tuned because we're going to give away some more at the end. Okay, so stick around for that. Uh, and it says, my marketing. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, that's great. And actually, there's a place to get that. Marcy says, oh, come on. <laughs> All right, you guys are funny. Anyway, stick around because I'm going to give away two more, maybe three at the very end, right before the Q&A. Let's get moving along here. I know that that's why you're here tonight. Why is persuasive content important? Well, the first thing is, is that uh, it builds rapport, trust, and credibility, which are the three things hardest to do on the Internet because you're not there to really uh, shake someone's hand. So we all meet people in our offices and at bars and things like that, and we have a rapport that goes on. It's built instantly at the, at basically on a handshake. And uh, on the Internet, it's, it's hard to do, so I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. Plus, persuasive content makes people trust you, obviously, so they come back to your site again and again. They also keep visitors on your site longer. If they're engaged and they feel like they're learning something and getting value out of this, they stay on their on your site longer. Staying on your site longer will reward you with higher search results, period. That's one of the secrets to search engine results that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, it's not keywords all the time. It's how long people are actually staying. Google knows that and they can measure how long people are staying. It also tears down the wall of sales resistance, which is exactly what you want to do, but you need to have it work for you. You're not there as like a slick used car salesman being able to um, get into that with your customer. They have to read what's on there while you're not home, basically, and all this needs to work on automatic. So persuading your visitors means four things I'm going to show you tonight. It means understanding your prospect. It means understanding why they've even arrived at your website at all. The big one is you need to understand the pain and suffering that they're going through or the real reason that they have searched and found your website. And also the big one here again, offering solutions to that pain, not just more information that they have to suffer through. Okay. They want, uh, they want solutions now. So um, I usually tell everyone at this point in the webinar that, no one is searching for more information. They're always searching for instant solutions to a problem. And if you can do that, you've won them over. One way to win your prospect over is to educate them into what you're doing and how you can help. Everything else beyond education is basically sales hype. When you take the time to educate, it, it, uh, it creates a visualization in your visitor's head and they also know that you're really trying to help that you're taking not taking them for granted so uh, I learned this in 20 years of doing selling jewelry that education about that piece about that stone about how it was crafted is uh, creates more value an educated customer will pay more for a product or service than one who doesn't know or doesn't care period we do that in retail all the time and it's been tested a million times. Because when your prospect can make a more informed decision about how your product works or how your service can improve their lives or how your business is unique and different than your competition, and especially how you improved your own life with your knowledge that you're trying to sell to them now, their trust in you will go through the roof. And here's the biggie point that I want to make and here's why it's so important to educate your prospect because educating your prospect just like education on any level empower them it paints a picture of what their life will be like if their problem is solved and this works through any kind of industry and even in retail and service industry but especially the ones that my community uh, are exceptional at and that's coaching and life changes and and health and all these other things Educating them gives people the power to see what their life would be like if their problems were solved. There are certain catchphrases that you can use in your copy that make clear that you are trying to educate them, and they usually come at the very beginning of, of sentences and paragraphs. And I want to say right now that you're going to see a lot of copy examples tonight, and a lot of these examples are just the beginnings of sentences because Here's one tip I want to give you tonight that's really important. How you start a sentence 
has everything to do with the effect that the rest of the paragraph is going to have on the reader. You have one shot to make an open, and that will set the stage of, scar of scarcity. It sets the stage of authority, education, all sorts of things I'm going to point out tonight. Here's some phrases you can use, such as, here's what you need to know. Here's why this is important to you. And you'll understand more clearly when you read this. Not only are you showing that you're educating your prospect, you're perking them up and, and alerting them that something is about to happen. So they're, very high, they're highly suggestive as well. Let's talk about a few common mistakes that a lot of us make. It's not because we don't know what we're doing. It's because we're thinking about our copy and how we're writing it in an illogical fashion. And I'm going to point out some examples here and how I rewrote them to increase conversions. And the big ones we want to avoid are obviously generalizations. And we don't want to talk about the process of how everything's got to work and bore you people to death. And of course, a big one is we don't want to be salesy or hypey. So let's take a look at a few uh, at a few pieces of copy that some clients sent me. And the first one, avoid, avoid generalizations. You want to make your copy personal so that you're talking in your own voice to each and every one of your visitors, kind of one at a time. So a client sent me this piece of copy, and it's actually not bad. It says, our weight loss system has helped thousands of women just like you to lead healthier and happier lives. Boom. That sounds positive to me. It didn't sound too bad, but I rewrote it, and I thought to myself, well, how can I make it sound more personal, like we're having a personal experience? What does weight loss really mean to me or to you or to someone who's actually losing weight? And I rewrote it as this. Butterflies of excitement ran through Lisa's body when she stepped on the scale this morning. Our product had really worked. When's the last time you felt that way? Now, if we look at that sentence, what I've done is I, in, I made it personal by taking a fictional character, Lisa, and I tried to explain how it felt, what it feels like to lose weight. Instead of making a generalization about thousands of women, I wanted Lisa to explain how she felt when she lost weight because it relates to the emotional character of your reader. And then I asked a question, when's the last time you felt that way? So I'm leading people to say, well, maybe I've never felt that way, so maybe I should try this product. It's a leading, it's called an open or leading question. And when I sent this back to my customer and they ran this copy through and tested it, it had a 22% increase in sales. So I really knew I was on to something at, um, at that time here. Now, the next one is process. And that's a fancy word for just explaining how everything works, which can be exciting for you, but very boring for your reader. Why is it exciting to you? Well, you're the one who invented this process. You're the one who invented your philosophy, and you're very excited, and you're very educated, and you want to talk about it. It's fun to talk about it. So the first thing that we like to write about is us and how uh, we came up with this and how great it is and how it's different than everyone else. But it's really not touching the emotional benefits of what really matter. Remember your customers is thinking this, what's in it for me, which is not how things work but identifying real benefits of what really matters to them. So a client sent me this piece of copy again, and, it, and they uh, sent me this, and it says, our new technology will clean your carpets with more power and reliability. Super clean does the job that others can't. And I thought to myself, well, you know, technology, power, reliability, whether the thing can come and suck the carpet right out of my townhouse, you know, all that sounds good, but what does carpet cleaning really mean to me? What are the real benefits that a clean carpet really means? So I thought about the benefits that matter most to people, and I think I usually think family and time is, is the two biggies, and I like to keep that in mind while I'm writing. So I rewrote a piece of copy that said, fresh, clean carpets for your children to play on and more time to spend with them. Yes, super clean can do all that. It's almost identically the same amount of words, just completely different. And I focused on children's safety, their cleanliness, uh, the health aspect of clean carpets, and the idea that if you're not cleaning your carpets and someone else is coming to do it, then you get to spend more time, which is something you can never get back. So those are the benefits that really matter most to people. So I went ahead and sent that over to SuperClean, which is actually a company right here in Virginia Beach that hired me uh, locally. 
and there was a 32% increase in new customers. And this is right off their website. So it was, I was really, again, very proud of that. Proud to have been given the chance to try these theories out. Here's the big one. Now, most of us in our community don't do this, but you see ads like this all the time. And they're hypey. And people uh, don't like hypey and salesy ads. I don't know why people keep writing them. But you don't want to avoid hype, and you want to focus on feeling good, what's called comfort words. And here's a piece of copy someone actually sent me, believe it or not. It says, make $21,000 a day with this proven system of Internet affiliate websites. 130,000 customers can't be wrong. Well, they sent me this and said, you know, uh, you know, no one's signing up for this as an opt-in box. And no one was signing up for it. And I said, well, I don't think anyone even believes that. Who believes that they're going to make all this money in one day? And they said, Colin, you know, it really works. People really do make that kind of money. And I said, well, you know what? You're focusing on the wrong things because even if it's true, people still won't believe it. And it all goes back to when I was a little kid and I got it in the back of a comic book, Archie comic, and I signed up for those sea monkey things. I think I was five years old. I sent off my dollar ninety nine plus postage, got the sea monkeys in the mail, and it was fish food. And I dumped them in the water and the fish ate them all. And you know what? I've been suspicious of every single ad ever since. So, you know, and people, you know, childhood traumas like that can really have an effect on how people view ads. So I rewrote it as this. I wanted to take away the $21,000 hype. And I wonder, what does that really mean? If What would it really mean if you could make that kind of money every day? And here's what I rewrote for my customer. It said, Bob no longer worries about being fired. The lifestyle he's created with our affiliate income websites has given him freedom and peace of mind. Because I know that being fired is a real concern. And having the freedom to start your own business and the peace of mind of being financially secure means far more than some big figure thrown in your face like that. So avoid hype, focus on comfort. And of course, when I sent it back, they were more than delighted because there was a 44% increase in click-through rates from that change. So again, I thought I knew I was really onto something. Here's one thing I have never shared on this webinar uh, up to this point. I, I did share it at butt camp, at last, Tom's last butt camp, but this is the most important job of copy and I want you to keep this in your mind and this little and this little phrase at the bottom next time you're writing anything that you're writing whether it's a Facebook post or an autoresponder or an email or web comment or anything taking the reader to a place in their mind where they can envision their life improving because of your product or service that's the goal that's the most important job of copy copies take the reader to a place in their mind where they can envision their life improving because of your service. How do you do that? You simply need to dive into the war already being waged in their hearts. When people come to your website, they're weighing a lot of different things. They're in pain and they're looking for solutions. They're weighing whether to believe it or not. They're very suspicious of preconceived notions, fears, and prejudices that already exist when they get to your website. You need to address those. So, and you don't want to hide. You don't want to hide those uh, and not talk about those. You want to reach in and and address taboo subjects because this is what you want your prospect to think to themselves. If you can give voice to what I privately believe or fear in my heart, but have never told anyone, I will trust you forever. When you reach in and you identify the pains and prejudices and fears of your prospect and you address them in a mature manner, they'll trust you forever. They'll never go anywhere else. That's the most important job of copy. And you'll be able to read all this in the slides because you'll be able to down download all of this tomorrow. When we talk about what matters most to people, there are real benefits that matter most and it's not usually the ones you think about which are the big numbers and you know uh, being famous and you know having all these beautiful women around you all oh, it sounds great but those are basically just uh, what happens if you're successful but you can't be successful um, if you can't sell a product to somebody because you're not identifying the benefits so I have an identi I have benefits identifier formula here here's the big eight 
Time, family, and freedom are the biggest three that you can use. Peace, dreams, comfort, ego, and prestige are the other five that matter the most. So these eight benefits are what people really matter the most to people. It's not the big ones that you typically think of. So, of course, how do you write keeping these eight in mind? And what I like to do is you don't have to use all eight in a, in a piece of copy, but I like to take maybe two or three, and I'll write them down on a little piece of paper. And so they're next to me when I'm rewriting something. Hold on. I'm uh, still recovering. If anyone was on the webinar, uh, the website critique webinar last Thursday, you could tell I had a fever of like 118 and I was dying. And I'm still recovering slightly. Oh, I feel much better. Thank you. All right. You want to take out of that eight, pick two or three that you think would really matter to your uh, target market and keep them visible and think about the word. Actually replace the words that are uh, related to those benefits. So I took three here just at random, free, uh, freedom, peace, and comfort. And uh, so uh, someone sent me this piece of copy, which I actually really like. And uh, it says, we've been so pleased with how popular the juice has been that we got back into the kitchen and have made some delicious juice blends, which we think everyone will enjoy just as much. I actually like that. That was well written because they're talking about themselves. They're talking about how it's handcrafted. Those are very good benefits to have, especially if you're making a healthy product. But it doesn't have freedom, peace, or comfort in there. So I wrote these down and I rewrote it. Uh, actually taking words, at least one word, relating to each one of these benefits and inserting them into the copy. So I rewrote it as this. You can choose from our delicious apple and raspberry recipe or totally tasty tropical, depending on whether you need to be transported to a serene country orchard or a desert island. So I wanted to take people away and send them to a different place to lower their sales resistance. I wanted to put in the name of the products for a little bit of brand recognition. And I like throwing words in such as choose, okay? Because giving people the choice is, is the greatest gift that you can give people. And they really appreciate it. And these are, so, these are very subtle. Obviously, the colors were there to help remember where I wanted to put what words I wanted to put in. But your reader's not going to see that. And it's very subliminal when they read it. And it's very subtle. That's why we call this stealth persuasion. So there's also something here that I changed. And it's extremely important. And if I'm not showing it to you yet, I will in just a second. But can you see something else that I did in here that has a major impact on, um, on creating trust and credibility? And if you can, can you put it in the chat box and let me know if you see something else, a copy that stands out that I changed? And I'll give you just a second to uh, put it in the chat box while I take a drink of water. Anybody uh, see anything in there? Abby says you took the word, you took out the word think. That's pretty good. Donna says um, the colors of the words. Well, the colors, they wouldn't really see those. Uh, Louise said you wrote about them second person. Um, Joe says you. Marcy says you didn't you use the word juice. <laughs> you know, everybody's got some great, yeah, great. Uh, Cheryl says sens sensory imagery that appeals to the sense is very good. Richard says we changed we to you. Barb says visions of drinking these on an island is great. Um, yeah, a few of you touched on it. Took them out of the kitchen, Marlene says. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, reference to the island can almost hear the peacefulness, Dion says. Nice. Uh, here, here's what I made. Look. And a few of you hit on it. It is we and you. Talking about yourself too much is a turnoff. And using the word we and our too much in copy, instead of saying you and yours, can create what we call inward and outward marketing. Let me show you an example of that. These are called customer-focused words. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, Al Borowski, who's usually on one of these webinars, said that when he was in sales school, Every time he did a sales presentation and he used the word we or our, his teacher would ring a bell. <laughs> so he would stop using it and try to focus on the customer. Inward marketing or what's called self-centered marketing is using we, our, and I too much. Talking about ourselves works about as much in dating as it does on selling a product. The last time I went on a date, and it's been a while now, thank God, 
every time I talked about myself and didn't say you enough, I didn't get that second date. And you won't get a second chance to sell anything either, okay? So outward marketing, reaching out and bringing your uh, reader in emotionally by using the word you and yours. Now, you don't have to sit and count how many times or that you've used you and yours. Sometimes it's hard to tell. But I do have this really cool tool that I want to share with you. It's an online free tool. It's called the WeWe Generator. And generally, you want to talk about your customers two times as more as you talk about yourself. And over there at futurenowinc.com forward slash wewetext.htm, there's a little place where you can paste in any copy. It can be email, con uh, Facebook post, web sorry, content, all this kind of stuff. You paste it in. It'll analyze it for you tell you how many times you're talking about yourself or how many times you're talking about your customer, and it'll give you a percentage rate. I used to, used to go on it live and do a little presentation here um, on the webinar, but I'm not going to do that tonight. But definitely go and use that. Not right now, but go over and use it later, and you're going to freak out when you see either how good or bad you've done, and it analyzes it instantly. And it's very cool. And I also have another thing that Joan Stewart gave me and turned me on to, and it's the ad speed calculator over at uh, that uh, uh, link here. I'm not going to spell that all out, but uh, it'll be in the slides and be downloaded it tomorrow. I also have a link on the page to or directly to it. It tells you if, it so if, if your content sounds too salesy. So these are two really cool online free tools that I absolutely love, and I use these all the time. And uh, and so I wanted to turn that on to you. That's the Wee Wee Generator, and it helps immensely. All right, this is, I know, one of the biggest things that everyone came on here tonight to learn. And it's about crowdfunding language. I know that crowdfunding is really huge. It's something we're getting into more and more. I know everyone who's using it, um, people have been successful, unsuccessful, it runs the gamut, but it's a great tool. Crowdfunding can literally uh, fund an entire business. Now, a couple really cool people over at Virginia Tech, I call them cool because I wish I got paid to sit around from a government grant or whatever and analyze copy. I have to, you know, I have to be funded um, by selling products, but that's fine with me. And uh, really cool people at Virginia Tech, they sifted through 45,000 Kickstarter campaigns. Can you imagine the time it took to do that? And uh, they analyzed the top 100 most popular phrases that were used in product descriptions over there at kick, uh, kickstarter.com, the crowd, big crowdfunding site. And uh, they found five that were indicators of crowdfunding failure. They wondered why that one product made a million dollars in funding and another one failed miserably and it was pretty much the exact same kind of product. And a lot of people thought it was, well, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of social network friends, or I've got a lot of networking, or I've done a good job at my prizes. But they found certain words that were included. I want to share them with you t uh, tonight. And look at these here. This is um, the language of crowdfunding. The big five were not been able, even a dollar, later I, a blank, and hope to get. And I see these a lot on crowdfunding uh, sites, and sometimes you don't really, it doesn't really stand out to you, but uh, these are kind of negative. And again, these are the, we talked about starting a sentence out with a really strong opener that affects the emotional connection to your visitor. And these are all kind of negative in a way. I hope to get funding. I've not been able to raise the kind of funds in the past, so I'm turning the Kickstarter to beg for more. I, mean, I, can, I don't know what sentences these are, but I can tell what they were starting out to say. Even a dollar will help us. That sounds just very terrible, you know, and, and these are phrases that you want to avoid. But the biggest changes was they found the 12 where people – had had the most success in funding. Marcy says, will you put the phrases up, please? Yes, they will be on the slides, downloaded uh, tomorrow in the replay, and you'll be able to access this slides, um, and uh, you'll be able to read all of this stuff because you'll want to re reference this forever. Successful campaigns. Some of the phrases were good karma and we can afford, project will be, mention your, given the chance, accessible to the, your continued, your option is, has pledged to build this. Now, this doesn't sound like, it sounds like gobbledygook, like 
these aren't really they don't really mean anything. But when you take a closer look, you'll see that these phrases started at the beginning of sentences create different levels of authority, choice, a sense of future or being around, uh, social proof, and scarcity, plus a couple of other ones. And here is a $10 million, look at that, they wanted $100,000 in their goal and they got $10 million funded. Free money, my friends, free money. $10 million from 68,000 people. And they used many of these phrases in their copy, and people just don't see it. We can afford is the opposite of begging for a dollar. The project will be, that uh, insinuates that there's going to be an ongoing relationship with, with their customers and the, and the product. Given the chance, that means they're looking forward to growth. So instead of, I couldn't raise a dollar, if given the chance to fund this, we'll be able to take it to the moon. See, that's a very positive. Accessible to the masses, to the people that need it most, and that's charitable sounding. Has pledged to build this. These are all social proof. So these were, take it as you, uh, what you want out of this, but these are what people, they got out of these, and these would be a great reference point for you in your next crowdfunding campaign, and I want to put a shameless plug in that if you have a crowdfunding campaign that you want to create, um, you can hire me to do that. All right. Here's the big copywriting tricks, the eight copywriting tricks that will triple your conversions. These are absolutely stupid easy. I've never shared them with anywhere until tonight. So lucky you. And these can be used in any situation, sales letters, opt-in forms, social media, Facebook and Twitter, video scripts, Article marketing, blog posts, website content, email content, everything that you write, uh, text messages, um, whatever. Wherever you need persuasion content. And I want to go through them right now. Number one, the big number one is figure out the primal desire of your market and just give it to them. Identify what is what they're really thinking about that most people don't really say they're thinking about, the primal desire, not the explicit, obvious desire, but the lizard-brained kind of desire that you know they're thinking about and address it. That's a huge copywriting trick that they never even see coming. So I wrote this little piece of copy as an example. Bridesmaids outshine even the most gorgeous bride on her own wedding day by losing 30 pounds in 30 days and fitting into those skinny jeans again. Now, I could have talked about weight loss and all this kind of stuff and how great it was and all this, but what, what do bridesmaids, for instance, really think about? A bridesmaid is a bridesmaid, usually because she's not married yet. Why isn't she married? I don't know. But she's kind of jealous of the bride a little bit. And if she could, if she could really believe that she could outshine even the bride on her own wedding day, you've perked her attention. So these are little sneaky things like that that people really think about. She would never say that, but I know she thinks it. So what is it about your uh, your particular target market that they may not be saying in public, but you know that they're kind of thinking about? And you might know it best because you probably were once thinking about those kinds of things too until your product solved this problem. All right, number two, confirm the prejudices and fears that have already that is already around your industry. Confirm the prejudices and fears your market already has around the industry. And we talked about that a little bit a little bit earlier in the webinar. Everyone comes to a particular product or service with some kind of prejudice or fear. And you have to address that. You can't pretend to gloss it over by using fancy words that they probably don't even understand or talking about hypey stuff that just sounds like unbelievable. You have to to admit that there are real problems and that you are different because you can change the way that they approach it. So I wrote this piece of copy here that says, perfect for those who have always desired a professional internet business mentor, but have been wary or downright scared of dishing out a ton of money and are not even sure you'll have someone to talk to. Now, I've been in internet marketing quite a long time, especially with Tom and my own products, and I realized that most of us are so sick of internet marketing products because we keep buying stuff 
we keep dishing out money and there's never anyone to help us. We just read these books and all this stuff and there's never anything, there's never any hand-holding, there's nothing going on here. And we kind of fear spending more money and failing at this stuff because it makes us look bad. And we don't think the gurus stunk. We, sometimes we think we stink and it, we downright nervous about it. And one way to address things like that is to say, yes, I know that you fear this and here's why it's different. So that's addressing the fears your, your market already has about your industry. Number three, make irresistible promises you know you can keep. So many of us write sales letters and copy on our websites and are scared to make promises. But think of the stuff that you know you can keep, stuff you can guarantee that is a bit nebulous, that people can't really pinpoint, but you just know. Identify the things that you're best at and make the promise that you know you can keep. What I call this is, I call this the the big ass promise, B-A-P, big ass promise. And what I mean by that is, is that you, there's some strengths that you have and some customer service abilities you have that stand out. Tell people that and make and make it uh, the promise in the copy. Don't try to pretend it sounds stuffy or something like that. And uh, so I wrote this. Um, can everyone see uh, number three here? There's a couple people saying that they don't see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got a little bit of a delay here, so I'll try to advance the slide a little bit uh, sooner. That's a good old good webinar for you. All right, yeah, and so make irresistible promises you can keep. And I wrote this. I'll be there to answer every question so you'll never be left behind. That in itself is huge. Now, I'm not making a promise that I can't keep. I will answer every question so you won't be left behind. That actually has two elements. One where I'm promising to be by your side. And that makes people feel better. All in one little sentence. And then I wrote, also, I guarantee that you'll be happier with this training than anything you've ever purchased before. Now, I'm making a guarantee there that really can't uh, be substantiated. It's just that I've already implanted in their mind that they'll be happier with this. And if they're slightly happier with this training than anything they've ever purchased before, which coming from me is actually really easy, because <laughs> I know everybody else's crummy products, I can actually keep that guarantee and I can say that in full faith and, and, and believe it. So if you can make a product that you know or a promise that you can believe in, just state it. I know that we can, we just forget to do that. All right. The next one of my eight copywriting tricks that will triple conversions is number four, and this is a really interesting one. And this one's called Transform the act of buying your products into a noble or heroic act. This is really cool. So we're, we're busy trying to sell our products and we're talking about all the things we think we need to say, but we need to twist the conversation into what's called cons from consumer or uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, hold on here. Just a um, what is that? Buyer remorse. That's it. We want to take away the buyer remorse and turn it into what's called buyer's pride. And how do we do that? We want to transform the act of buying a simple product into a noble or heroic act. So I see this all the time. Get rich online so you can buy a yacht. Okay, that sounds really cool. Or Ferrari or whatever it else. You're trying to sell a get rich quick product. So get rich online so you can buy a product. That would become with a uh, formula here survive the upcoming financial crisis and there will and you will be there to help your family and friends who can't help themselves now instead of selling them something that's going to give them a yacht that almost makes them feel guilty for buying it i changed the copy so that making money online gives me the financial security and freedom to help other people so now it's a noble and heroic act and the entire sales resistance has been dropped completely about trying to talk someone into this product. And you've let them envision themselves, again, with their lives being better because of your service. One of Tom Antion's famous lines that he always uses at all of his speeches and, 
and webinars and things is when he's trying to sell his uh, internet marketing products and make money online stuff. How can you give to charities if you're broke? Can you think about that for a minute? Well, you know, maybe I don't want to buy a yacht or Ferrari. Maybe I want to give all my money away. He, Tom says, I don't care what you do with your millions, but you have to buy my stuff to learn how to make it. And you can't give to charities and help the world if you're broke. And it's true. So you want to use turning your product into a noble act. Think about how you can do that with the products and service that you're selling and turn the tables on that. All right, number five out of the eight copywriting tricks that will triple conversions is addressing inherent laziness. Cater to the inherent laziness with hand-holding. Now, I hate to sound really bleak here, but all of us are inherently lazy. And it's not a negative. It's just that we would really like the shortcuts to things. We like things done for us. And it's not because we're lazy, really. It's because we fear failure. So I wrote this piece of copy. An example of this is this. Don't go it alone. Make, don't make the same mistakes I made. My copywriting templates will practically write themselves so you don't have to waste your time figuring it out. So I've identified, don't go it alone. I'm your best friend and guide. Don't make the same mistakes I made. Fear of failure. And my templates will practically write themselves so you don't have to waste your time. Inherent laziness. Yeah, I know I misspelled inherent, Judy, Julia. Thank you. <laughs> inherent, excuse, you know, excuse me. All right. And uh, that is really very cool. And uh, so, you know, identify what you think the shortcuts and frustrations, especially with trying to do it themselves, that your market has. And, and, and say that in the copy. So sell them the idea. I'll be with you. I'll hold your hand because I know that you either fear doing it or just don't really want to. And you'll make an instant connection uh, with, with your prospect. Number six, use a Q&A to get inside the head of your prospect. And anyone who's known me or, or seen any of my sales letters, always a Q&A or something in that that I use specifically to get inside the head. I want to ask the questions that I know you're thinking ahead of time so that you don't have to email me later when you're off the page and have me address the question. I'm going to figure out what are the things my prospect's actually thinking about. I'm going to actually write it out as if I, if, as if I can read your mind and I'm going to answer the question right there in the copy. Here's an example. Question. I've tried other diets that promise miraculous results. How is your product really different? Answer, our diet plan is not based on miracle cures or scientific breakthroughs. We help change the way you think about eating, giving you the control over your weight loss success. All right, let's take a look at how I wrote this. I've tried other diets that promise miraculous results. How is your product really different? What I've done is I've gone, I know that, especially with diet plans or anything else, that uh, people have already tried these things and they didn't work. Otherwise, they wouldn't be reading your stuff over here. If they had lost the weight, they wouldn't be looking for weight loss products. If they already made a million dollars, they wouldn't be looking for get-rich-quick stuff. So I already know they have failed, and they want to know what the difference between yours and someone else's is. And it's well, however you answer that is up to you. The fact that you wrote the question out that you know they're thinking about gets inside the head, and they go, damn, I can't believe he, he knows what I'm thinking. That's a huge step forward in making an emotional connection with your visitor. If you look at the answer, though, that I wrote, you'll see a couple of things in there. I talk about, uh, I talk about giving um, control over to them. That's choice. And also, I use the word weight loss success. I put little words like that, like success, to make uh, an, a, an affirmative and a positive uh, change there. So instead of weight loss product or weight loss service, you know, I, I seeded it. So that's really kind of cool. So you definitely want to get inside the head. You know more than anyone else out there what your prospects are thinking. And it's your turn now to address it even straight up. And using a Q&A is a very easy way to do it. It's a cute little template that really makes it easy for you because you can pretend to be having a dialogue with these people. Number seven 
I love this, use punched in the gut storytelling. All right, I've always said that your personal story and your unique situation is what's really going to set you apart in your comp from your competition. Your competition cannot keep up with you in terms of your unique story because they didn't live it. So when you're telling your story, don't be fluffy. Don't try to uh, hold punches back. You really want to slam it out there and make sure that they know that the impact has been huge on your life, especially with the product or information you're trying to sell. So I wrote this little story. After 10 years of type 2 diabetes, I was overweight, nearly blind, and suffering from draining exhaustion. I felt as if I was dying. Then, as if my prayers had been suddenly been answered, I stumbled across this piece of information. Now, we could all talk about a story, or we can talk about how bad type, type, type 2 diabetes is, but, you know, if, any, if your product has really helped you, tell your story in a way that really punches it right in the gut of your reader. Don't hold punches back when telling your story. All right, number eight, the sense of loss is stronger than the illusion of gain. All right, this is the biggest copywriting trick that will triple your conversions, never shared before tonight. And I love this one. And it's so simple to keep in mind. The sense of loss is stronger than the illusion of gain. Whenever we're writing copy, we're constantly trying to think of how people can gain more money, better health, better women, nicer cars, uh, gaining uh, a more respectful child, getting money back from their taxes, gain, gain, gain. But what really bothers people is the idea that they're going to lose something. And I have an analogy here that the dollar that you make for yourself is more valuable than the dollar you make for somebody else because you don't really get to keep that dollar. You would lose that dollar in that amount of work. The sense of loss bothers people. Here's two phrases that I uh, wrote and changed. The first one is a sense of illusion. Make more money with your plumbing business than ever this year. To rewrite that with losses, 38% of all plumbers will be out of business by the end of 2014. Bam. All right, that is something that people pay attention to. They don't want to be the ones uh, going out of business. That loss will kill them. So they're now perked up to read the rest of the copy. So those are my eight copywriting tricks. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, the copywriting tricks, um, feel free to email me and we can um, go over them together and uh, explain that. Since I've never presented that before, I really hope that it made sense. It's the first time I've actually, actually read these out loud. So um, I was, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone's staying basically on board with these. All right. I want to talk to you for elements. If you've seen one before, you, you already know what this is. But uh, there's two powerful elements that affect how people write or affect how they read copy. In creative writing classes, you're taught to have love conflict resolution. Basically, a crescendo there. Um, a book starts out with some kind of love or building the character. It's a conflict. Something happens in a resolution. Happy ending and the story. Well, ads have it, are the same way. They have love and a conflict and a call to action. So a typical uh, love conflict resolution is uh, Joni was a, a sweetheart. Um, uh, she loved her boyfriend and their teachers loved her and she had a great family life and, and she was cute and beautiful and had a cozy bed and her, and she loved her brother and she was just wonderful and she was walking to school one day, just like any other day. The big van rolled up. The door opened up. Three guys in, in, uh, in uh, big nasty clothing grabbed her, put a hood over her head, bound her up and threw her in the van and took off. The resolution is that Dad, using her cell phone signal, tracked down the bad guys, found their headquarters, beat them all up, took his daughter back home and saved the day. Now, that's a nice story. It's got a crescendo to it. It's got a beginning, middle, and end. It's also the basic movie plot to Taken with Liam Neeson. So in case you've seen that. Ads do the same thing. A typical ad would be, you love your home. You have all these memories. It's beautiful. You've paid all this money. You've done all this work. Your kids have grown up there. You absolutely love it. It's your home away from home. Then all of a sudden, uh, a flood comes, hurricane, 
washes everything away, destroys all your memories, destroys your home, floods, ruins your carpet, everything's ruined. Call SuperClean to come and fix everything, suck out all the water, and you'll be uh, back on your feet again. A typical ad there um, with love, conflict, and call to action. But when I was out in the woods for 10 weeks, I meditated on this for quite a while, and I realized that there's a super stealth persuasion trick that I like to use. And out of love, conflict, and a call to action, only two of these elements create powerful copy. One of these creates a huge and impactful sales resistance. Now, write in the chat box for me if you, if you can identify which one of these would you take away to create a great story without the sales resistance. Bradley says call to action. Perdita says love. Nice going, Perdita. Fred says call to action. Um, Sophie says love. Marlene says call to action. Luis says conflict. These are some great answers. I love it. Abby says conflict. A call to action, Jim says. Great. Uh, Roberta says love. Claire May says love. Bobby says call to action. Prince says conflict. Good, good. Well, let me, good answers. Louise says love never fails. <laughs> I have to agree with you there. And uh, Donna says call to action. Okay, let me tell you a story here real quick. Maybe you guys have seen this. This is a YouTube video that... Uh, it's very popular on YouTube, and it's called The Power of Words. And uh, there's this beggar, and he sits in the uh, courtyard every day near a fountain, and people like to play there. And he begs there every day, trying to get money up for, up for a place to sleep and, and a, uh, to eat every day. And the people there, they just um, they ignore him. They've seen him every day, and they're laughing and going about their day, and no one ever really gives them any kind of money. And uh, he has a sign there, and it says, I'm blind, please help. But yet no one really gives anything. He sits there. He can tell little bits of money hitting the bottom of the can. He can hear it. But uh, people generally just go about their day, and they don't, really, they don't really pay him any mind. One day, though, this lady comes across. She's seen him once or twice before, and she was leaving – uh, going to lunch from her job, and she comes by him and sees him sitting there, and she stares down at the sign. All of a sudden, she picks the sign up, and uh, she starts writing something else on it. And he can smell her perfume, and he he feels in the video he feels her shoes, and you know uh, he can tell who she is. And uh, but he doesn't know what he's doing, what she's doing to her, his sign. Anyway, she gets done writing, and she puts it back. And she puts it down, and all of a sudden, something very miraculous starts to happen. She goes on her merry way. All of a sudden, he can hear money hitting the can and hitting the cardboard. And people started to give. Then people started to give more and more, and this just kept going and going. People kept giving more. Every, every time someone walked by, he could hear money hitting the, hitting the cardboard. And people kept giving and giving and giving. It was absolutely miraculous. He had no idea what was going on. The one thing he did know was that the weight of his can equaled how much he would be able to eat tonight and that he would have a warm place to sleep. When he felt the can and felt how heavy it was, he knew that something miraculous had happened. About 5 o'clock, the same woman comes back through the court on her way home. And... Uh, he smells her perfume and feels her shoes and knows it's her who did something to a sign. And he, he bends down and he says, my love, what did you do to my sign? And she said, it's the same sign. I just wrote different words. Well, what words did she write? It's a beautiful day and I can't see it. I know it's pretty. It's pretty touching. You know, I like. I really love that video. It really makes a big impact on me every time I watch it. Okay, it's a beautiful day, and I can't see it. 
from that story, if you if you can catch it, now which one of the three would you remove? Love, conflict, or call to action? Go ahead again if you got the gist of the story and put it in the chat box. It is call to action, call to action, call to action. Marcy says, rip. Abby says, call to action. Absolutely, Jim, Clarame, Fred. Fred says, call to action, avoid the sales. Absolutely. In the first sign he had, I'm blind, please help, there was a conflict and a call to action. I'm blind, please help, there's nothing wrong with that. Why didn't people give? But people didn't. In the next sign that she wrote, there was no call to action. It was only love and a conflict, and people gave like crazy. Well, that's pretty amazing. I've thought about that for a long time. And I wondered what in the world made that kind of difference. And I came up with what's called the love conflict formula. And it's simply this. A call to reaction creates an immediate sales resistance for many visitors. Love brings the resistance down. And then the conflict makes them anxious to discover the solution. So obviously, if you don't have a call to action, how in the world do you do your prospects know what to do next? That's because they're not stupid. You need to lead your prospects to the proper choices and trust them to make the right decisions after putting emotional and persuasive content at work. And the emotional plea, Abby, is right. She writes emotional plea. Absolutely. Love in conflict formula is this. Creating a love and then making a conflict statement creates a sense of curiosity that cannot be quelled. I wrote a few headlines here using the love and conflict formula that I came up with while I was meditating out in the woods for 10 weeks. And here's a few of them that I've written. Your product can help people, but no one's buying it. If the real estate market is recovering, why will 48% of agents lose their jobs this year? I met the soulmate of my dreams, then he disappeared without a trace. And then a good old one from Ogilvy, often a bridesmaid, never a bride. I have a couple more here. You are so in love with your boyfriend, but he just left you for another woman. Now that's a conflict. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. No, I don't leave my boyfriend, but I understand the whole concept. Vicky's looking at me crazy over here. You're a great public speaker, and you're not making any money. You're exercising and feeling great, but you're slowly dying inside. Now, I just used that one with a client of mine um, not too long ago. She's a health guru, and she wrote a book, and we had, was in an opt-in. And all we put in the opt-in, you're exercising and feeling great, but you're slowly dying inside. And people signed up like crazy, wanting to know why they were dying. What in the hell was she talking about? These are what are called curiosity building statements, and they can be used as tweets, headlines, email, subject lines, if they're, if they're short enough, um, beginning statements of sales letters or web pages. This stuff wakes people up. And I love this formula. And it really works. And we tested it and tested it. And people have an emotional connection to it because they're thinking of the love statement and then they're thinking of the conflict. And yet they're not putting up a wall of resistance because you didn't push a pushy call to action on them. Bam. Okay. Now, I wanted to give away two more of those little black book of autoresponder training packages that I, uh, that I gave away uh, earlier. I want you to try one of these yourself. I'm going to give you a minute to think of your own industry and try a love and conflict formula statement. It can be really short. Take a drink of water here and try one for yourself. Put it in the chat box. And the best one, I'll give away the two best ones that I think are most interesting. I'm going to give away the prize. So let me look here. Um, Chris says you're a master at copywriting. Okay, that's not, she's not trying yet. <laughs> she's just being uh, thoughtful here. Uh, Bradley says you've got a great message, but your audience is falling asleep. That's nice. <laughs> I'm, uh, okay, uh, let's see. Marcy says, here's one I use. Do you love your kids so much, but you're becoming that parent you never wanted to be? Oh, I like that, Marcy. I do. Uh, Fred's going, me, me, me. No, you're not begging at this point, Fred. You're supposed to be writing one of the conflicts. 
mind. You're funny. <laughs> oh, Clara says, please, the little book, Outer Splendor Sleep. Good luck, you guys aren't begging for you writing one of the headlines. Oh, using the formula. See if you get in this. Okay. Um, Fred says, you have the engineering knowledge. Here you go, Fred. You have the engineering knowledge, and no one is listening to you. Good. Cheryl says, you're a fantastic writer, but you can't pay your rent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I've been there, Cheryl. Uh, that's really huge. I love that. John, you're upset with how we are treating our vets with post-traumatic stress disorder, but you're not doing anything about it. Nice. Bradley, you pamper your dog, but his water dish is empty. <coughs> wow, that's pretty uh, That's pretty rude. <laughs> that's a punch, Bradley. I like it. Julia says, I had the greatest life in the world until I came down with chronic fatigue syndrome then everything changed. Wow. I like that, Julia. Very, very, very good. Fred says, you love your job and no one is listening. Okay. I read that one already. Louise, you have to keep your uterus, but you can't keep bleeding like this. Wow. I don't know what to say about that one. <laughs> Man. Um, actually, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty good. I have to admit. I mean, really. I've already given you the prize, so, you know. Uh, Clara May says, you're excellent in doing repairs, but no one seems to know about it. Good. Janice, you love your business, but your views are killing you. Richard, you're trying so hard to learn English, but nothing seems to work. Very good. Abby says, you joined the police force to help people, so why does everyone look at you like you're a Gestapo stormtrooper? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I like that. Did I give you the prize already, Abby? I did. Wow, I think I did. I did. Anyway, well, I guess I can't give you two of them. Fred says, you went to the best schools, now you sit alone outside. Nice. You joined the police to help people. Why does everyone hate you? Very good. You're taking pain relievers, but you're slowly dying inside. That's a good one, Jim. Chris, that one was great. You can't blank, but you won't blank. Marcy says, no fair, Louise already won. <laughs> okay. Hold on just a second. I'm going to read a couple more. Okay, coughing. Joanne, uh, Joanne says, just joined, wanted to give you a, a, a plug. I purchased a persuasion course earlier, and it's the best decision I've ever made. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Okay. I went to Drexel University, but I'm at the poverty level. Those are nice. You keep drafting lines, but none of them win. Okay, um, these are great. You know what I get out of this? That you understand my beautiful love and conflict formula. The one thing that I sat and meditated on and, and really you guys get it. And I really appreciate that. And thank you so much. These are some of the better I've ever read on any of the Stealth Persuasion webinars I've ever had in the past. Um, Cheryl, I'm going to uh, tell everyone what yours was again. It was, uh, you're a fantastic writer, but you can't pay your rent. It's very short and simple. I guarantee if you put that in a subject line or a tweet or something, people will go crazy. Cheryl, you get the prize. Cheryl. All right. Cut now. And let me pick one more person. You know what? The uh, I really like the uterus one. Who, who told me that? Let's see. Well, I can't find it now. Oh, um, all right. Louise says I won already. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm fortunate to work with animals. At times, I never want to see another dog again. I like that, Donna. And I'm going to give you the prize, too. All right, I got one more, and I'm going to give it away. You are a great teacher, Colin. Everybody gets it. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, that wasn't one of the formulas. <laughs> Marcy, Marcy, do you really want it? Okay, I like yours. Do you love your kids so much? You're becoming that parent you never wanted to be. I like that. And uh, you got a vote from Vicky. That's the best one she's ever heard so far. So Marcy. I get it. Uh, yeah, good job, Marcy. I like that one. Uh, Vicky says that she understands that completely. Uh, do you love your, you love your kids so much, but you're becoming that parent you never wanted to be? Yes, I like that one. All right. So that we those were great. You were you're a great coach, but no one's calling you. Joanne <laughs> throwing her two cents in there. I love it. All right, good job, everyone. I loved those. Those are some of the best I've ever seen. All right, our Q and A is coming up here in just a second, but I'll ask you first. 
did I keep my promise with you tonight? And did I show you what Google wants to see in website content and how to how a call to action creates sales resistance and how love and conflict can be persuasive? Obviously, you understand that one because you guys did the best job ever. Increase your customer-centered words and did I show you what benefits are most important plus my super eight big copywriting techniques that I never shared before. And uh, you thought, did I cut my promise? Please put yes in the chat box. And also, was I cute and funny? I was hoping that was funny. Abby says, yep, heck yes. Bradley, Chris, Marlene, everyone says yes. Uh, Abby says, you sure did. Tom taught you well. Damn right he did. Marlene, absolutely. Yes, sure. Jim, yes. Louise, you were a man of your word. Marcy, you've never been, um, that's great. But I would say yes. And she says, I'm handsome and cute. Oh, that's nice. Marcy, thank you. Yes, 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 Cheryl. That was great. Excellent. I'm so glad you guys were here tonight. I really uh, want to thank you for your time because I know you could have been spent it somewhere else doing some fun. Um, but so I hope we had a good time with this. Um, and I could have talked all night about this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm long-winded. I know we're a little bit over time here. And uh, the Q&A is coming up. I promise I'll get to your questions. Uh, but there's still some things I wish I could have covered tonight that we didn't get a chance to cover. And But there are important topics and techniques that you need to know about. And the first one is writing in a conversational tone. If you can write like you're having a conversation with somebody, that's a, that's a technique in itself to really build in an emotional uh, tether with your prospect. Also, building a persona or a character for yourself we see a lot of that, and people are really good at it. And sometimes your brand leaks over into selling yourself. How do you build a persona? Very important. Also, how do you sell? How do you frame yourself as the expert without sounding too pushy or conceited? Or how do you get people to actually tell you or share with their community that you're the expert without you having to do it? And we're not talking about testimonials here, but a, a bit of copywriting technique. Also, a really good copywriter can lead your visitors step-by-step step to results. So we're not just talking about stuff on our website. We're actually leading them from page to page, conversion to conversion, getting them to opt in or buy something. Also, video is one of the biggest things going on right now, especially with YouTube and mobile apps and everything. 85% of people now get their information with video. Do you know that you can insert every one of these copywriting techniques I've showed you tonight into your video scripts? But how do you do that? And where exactly do you do that at in the script? Also, you can use stuff like this stealth persuasion in your Facebook and Twitter accounts to build a huge following and fanship. Well, lucky for you tonight, the Stealth Persuasion Workshop answers all of those questions. And there are 12 exclusive webinar recordings that I made, and they cover article and blogging content, creating product launches, which I know we're all getting hot on, Crafting the perfect sales letters, lots of fun there. How to create social proof so when someone comes to your site, they know that other people have enjoyed it and benefited from it. Also, how to get characters to sell for you. That's a very interesting workshop that I put on. These are all exclusive workshops that I had with some uh, real small group of high content people, and I recorded them all, and they're all available now as replays. And the characters to sell for you is really cool. And if you've never tried that before, it's really neat. Also, how do you use situations and stories to brand yourself? We talked about your unique story, but how do you use it to build brand awareness? Also, I have a workshop on crafting powerful teleclass and webinar closes. We're all doing teleclasses and webinars, and if you're not, you should be, because that's where the money really is. How do you structure the closes that get people to really buy? Also, there's so much new stuff, new media things happening all the time, text messaging, polls, comment marketing, and uh, all these new apps and all sorts of new social media outlets and uh, tagging and all this stuff. Every bit of it has stuff to do with copywriting, and every one of these is covered in the Stealth Persuasion Workshop, which is 24 hours of video recordings plus Qs and As with all the group of people that I had um, during, I think it was a two-month period of time. Another part of the workshop is also three hours of over-the-shoulder training videos where actually screen capture going to websites and sales letters and ripping them apart and showing them 
how I would have rewritten them or showing you how I wrote the ones that I three hours of over the shoulder training. It's it's fantastic. And also the swipe files. Every important email that Tom ever sent out or I ever got from some of my uh, famous friends such as Jeff Herring and, and uh, Frank Kern and people like that, I didn't throw them away or delete them. I kept quite a few of them and I compiled them into this folder called the swipe files of the masters. And that comes with the workshop. That's all the recordings, three hours of videos, and my self persuasion ebook and the swipe files. It's seven hundred and thirty dollars worth of stuff. I'm offering it for ninety seven dollars or two payments of fifty dollars tonight. And um, you can find that over at expertwebwriting.com. It's a little sales letter over there, and you can um, get the workshops. But the big thing here is I'm going to get to it in just a minute. There's a couple of people that bought this already, and Joanne already gave me a decent plug and said it was the best decision she ever made. Richard bought it, and he said, if you charge twice the price for your program, I'd buy and tell others to buy. You've been outstanding responding to emails and questions, and that is worth everything. And Richard, I did charge you twice because you're such a good friend of mine. I'm just kidding. All right. Sonia, the beautiful Sonia, says, thank you so much. You are the best. Can't wait to work together. And then, of course, my famous boss one of the best copywriters in the world. It pretty much taught me everything I know. And then I just expanded upon that. Old Tom Antion said, Stealth Persuasion is great, and I highly suggest you watch it. The ideas presented were brilliant, and you can put them into, your, into play immediately in your business. Brilliant. If anyone that knows Tom knows he doesn't, uh, he doesn't say things like that lightly. He's mean and, and, and grumpy most of the time. <laughs> So um, that was a great endorsement, Tom. Here's the super bonus, the one I really bet you would care about. I'm giving you a one-on-one -on -one content critique and editing or rewrite of a website homepage or any page that you want, any of your sales letters, your opt-ins, email promotion you're sending out, any kind of direct mail mailed to people physically, video scripts, um, anything that you have. I'll look at it, and I'll edit it, critique it, and rewrite it for you so it converts so you don't have to do it yourself. You can hire me as your personal editor for free. It's a $297 bonus, but since I have to wait for everyone to send me the stuff and i got to take time writing it, and I usually do a screen capture and a rewrite, it's very time-consuming. So I can only take 25 people um, tonight uh, for this super bonus, and that is all part of the workshop tonight. So you get 24 hours of webinar recordings, the training videos, the ebook, the swipe files, and the personal one-on-one -on -one editing time. That's a thousand dollars worth of my time and training. And I just want to reward you with it for only $97. It's over at expertwebwriting.com. I want to start the Q&A now, but I do want to, uh, I want to thank you again for being here and taking the time to watch this. And I hope you got something out of it. And um, I love my community being here. We always have such a good time, me and Vicky sitting here together. So if you want all the workshop recordings, all the slides, the Q's and A's, and you want to hire me as your personal editor for any project that you have, and even websites that don't even exist yet, because you might as well not even write anything until you have me look it over first, because it's just going to change everything anyway. $97, expertwebwriting.com. I would love for you to join me in our community tonight over there at at Stealth Persuasion Workshop. And let's go ahead and get with the Q&A right now. So if you have any questions, uh, you can go ahead and put them in the chat box. Let's take another drink of water here. I've been talking my butt off here. And we're going to take a few minutes to do the Q&A. So if anything, if you have any questions about anything that we went over tonight or anything about the Stealth Persuasion Workshop, and if you're on the fence and you're uh, thinking about purchasing and you need a question answered, I'm here for you right now. And if you want me to address anything that we really went over uh, earlier, because um, I know it was a lot of content, but there will be a recording and download of the slides tomorrow, so you can take your time going through it again, go ahead and ask me now. Uh, Bradley says, you'll be hearing from me. That's good, Bradley. I, I love that. Uh, Kay says, totally, totally awesome and adorable I am. Yeah, okay. That's not a question, but I do enjoy your... Compliments, Kay. <laughs> Claire May says, is this different from the Stealth Persuasion program you offered a few weeks ago? Um, now, this is probably the same thing. I, I did another one with Joan Stewart, um, and then I, I think I did uh, this a, maybe a month ago to the same list. It's the same workshop. 
Stealth Persuasion is one of my main workshop uh, products. The other products I have are the, uh, the website critique and the autoresponder training program. Uh, so this is Stealth Persuasion. Yeah, it's pretty much the same one I've offered before. Uh, it's got lots of great content. Uh, Roberta says, oh yeah, addressing this, Roberta says, do you have to have a website up already to do the editing? No, I want to explain that I'll honor the editing critique if you purchase tonight. I'll honor the critique out for, I don't care how long it takes. I'll be, in, I'm not going anywhere, so I'll be here for a year or whatever. So if you're working on your website content and you don't have any up yet, that's the perfect time to get me to look at it before you spend a lot of money and time with a web designer putting it all up just to have to go back in and change all the content. So I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, Cheryl says, masterfully done, A+. Plus. Oh, that's nice. And uh, yes, I also have the two installments, remember, to 50 each. Marcy says, nice to hear you again after all this time. I know, Marcy, I haven't seen you. I was just telling Vicky I hadn't seen you in a long time. I've got to drop off before my beloved dog scratches his way out the front door. All right, Marcy, yeah, if you have any uh, questions, I appreciate you uh, uh, being in my community, and we'll see you on the next webinar. So anybody got any questions, if you don't have any right now and you want to think about it, you can always write me over at videopoweratlive.com. I'm going to put that in the chat box here so everyone can see it. Videopoweratlive.com. Put the, uh, put the at here. There we go. And I'm going to send that back because I'll answer questions about this webinar, unlike my other webinars, um, anytime after this. Sophie says, can I share workshops with a couple of interns I'm getting to work with me? Absolutely. You should share this with everyone, even some of your closest friends or your, especially your VAs and your interns and other people that may uh, want to do some writing for you. I know that we can't write everything ourselves, and this is perfect. So you can these, The workshop's made up of videos, streaming videos that you can watch forever once you get the pages to them and all the downloads and links to resources, and you can just share that or email that page to anyone you want. So um, good question, Sophie, on that. Uh, Claire May says, great webinar. I'm glad I got the workshop with Joan. Yep, yep, that was it. That's right. Joan, uh, we had a great time on Joan Stewart's uh, webinar, and we uh, got a lot of people on that one, so I really appreciate that. And uh, everyone is uh, more than welcome to join me on this whenever they want. Um, if you can't get in now, you can always get in later. Um, be aware that the 25-person uh, editing thing may fill up fairly quick, but I usually it doesn't fill up. So usually I have quite a few over the next day or two before I get too busy on that. But it's definitely worth the effort. Um, Julie says, great reminders. Thanks so much, Colin. Hope you uh, hope your new Udemy course is coming along. Yeah, I'm working on something at Udemy, udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com. And there's going to be, you can actually buy some of these workshops here in the future um, separately, not all at one price, but maybe like 20 bucks a pop for, you know, each of the 12 or something like that, which come out a little bit more, but um, can get you started on certain topics. And uh, Frank says, okay, yeah, this, do you get the slides to each one? Because I just want to, don't want to watch the videos. I want to get right to the slides and just learn everything as quick as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't have to sit through all the webinars, um, recordings. You can actually just get the slides and you can get examples of real copywriting techniques, how I structure product launches. It covers all sorts of things, how to create social proof plugins and uh, software services that you need for WordPress that help you create copywriting techniques and social proof, um, how to do comment blogging, all this stuff. And all the things are in the slides. So I always offer downloads of the slides with each and every one of the videos. So good question there, Frank. Thank you. Um, Jim. Would I want to get this in place in my video critique? I'm most interested in copywriting corrections needed in my website. Um, yeah, the, uh, if you want to get this in in conjunction with the copywriting or the critique, um, then that's pretty much well-rounded everything that uh, you have. And Jim, I think I gave you the, uh, I think you won the autoresponder program a couple weeks ago, so you would have just about everything I have. <laughs> Hire me, and we can go over your copy uh, content. 
So that would be great. Bradley says, I'm glad I invested in this several months ago because I knew I'd be needing what you teach and I learn more with each webinar. I agree with Richard. It's still a bargain at twice the price. Thank you, Bradley. I really appreciate you. And it was so great to meet you at Tom's Buck Camp a couple months ago. And that was really fun. Sophie says, okay, I just bought it. Thank you, Sophie. And Roberta says she just bought it. Thank you, Roberta. I appreciate that. This is great. Um, Joanne's got a big question here that says, uh, on my site, performingedgecoach.com, I have a form to send uh, email to send me an email, but I get tons of emails from webmasters and salespeople rather than prospects. What does this say about my site? That it's getting found, but by the wrong people? Wow, that's a that's a tough question, Joanne. So you have an opt-in form, but you're getting... Well, I don't think people would send really opt-in if they're just trying to pitch you something. It works that way. Joanne, why don't you... Uh, You've got my email. Why don't you send me that question tomorrow and let me uh, take a look at what's going on. Something like, like there might be like a technical problem or you might be talking about spam or some kind of something like that that you're getting. I'm not really sure. So um, instead of address that here, let me take a look at it and let, so let, we can see what you're talking about. Yes, I love to do personal things with my clients, like look at their websites. So Joanne, definitely get in touch with me there. Um, let's see. Let's see, get any more questions. How long does the purchase person have to view videos? Can't watch for a month or so. Oh, these these are your web pages. They'll be emailed to you. They'll be up forever. And you can bookmark them and just save the addresses to them. And you can watch them for years and years and years. And with copy, all this is relevant. This stays relevant. Because no matter what the changing technology is, it doesn't matter what new platform of whatever comes out that I don't even know how to work at time, copywriting stays the same. Using the emotional words that push emotional triggers for your prospects never really changes regardless of what kind of new technology comes out. It's always the written word that stays important. So uh, this really never goes out of style, and the secrets in the workshop never really expire, or they don't really ever um, go obsolete. Luis says, sorry if I missed the answer, but when does this offer end? Um, this offer really doesn't end at all. Um, I was trying to get as many people in on uh, to the 20, you know, the first 25 as I can because it gets backed up. But if you get it, I will go ahead and try to offer. I haven't gotten up to 25 yet, as far as I can tell. I haven't checked my shopping cart. So um, usually, if you got, if you get this a couple days later or a week later, I've already gotten uh, through some of the copywriting, um, and uh, I have room to do more of the editing. And a lot of people that buy it now tonight wait and send me copy literally months later because they haven't, they're not ready yet, and that's totally fine. And again, that gives me more room to do the work. I just don't like to try to sell 75 of these things and promise all this editing and, and take weeks to get to it. But the offer doesn't end and it doesn't expire, Louise. So I appreciate that. Ute says, signed up. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate it, Ute. It was nice to meet you at Tom's Butt Camp. There's all sorts of people that I've met. I love doing these butt camps with Tom. We, they're happening about every 60 days now. And uh, I'm seeing people I've only known on the Internet, which is really weird, you know, for years. So uh, let's uh, get some more questions. And Joanne says, I purchased Stealth Precision earlier, which is fantastic, when you first did it live. This is new offering of your Stealth course, the same one as before. Or if we bought it before, do we get the updated version? Um, no, this, the webinar was updated, but the Stealth Persuasion workshops are the same one, Joanne, that I've been um, selling all year. So the content in the course is exactly the same because it's perfect. It doesn't need changing. But I just changed uh, the webinar here because a lot of people um, haven't. I really wanted to share those eight copywriting secrets because I've never presented them anywhere until tonight. And they were just so profound. And people just told me that this is gold, and I love hearing that. And I really wanted to share that because I know how much this content really works and how much it can really work for you. And this is part of my high-content uh, webinars this year where I want to give you the power to help people help themselves. You know, it's not about making much money. It's really about do, uh, fulfilling your calling and being able to help people that really need it. And uh, I've been harping on that for two years now. And uh, the more content that I can give you for free and the more different content, 
content I can give you in these webinars that you can take away now and really use this weekend even to make a difference is it's the whole goal here. You know, ninety seven dollars, you know, whatever. I you know, I make that all the time. It's no big skin off my back, whether you buy it or not. The fact is is that you can actually use this stuff to help people help themselves and educate people and really change lives. And that's the whole reason why we're doing this. You know, it's it's about fulfilling our calling. So I'm getting off my soapbox here. But I just wanted to really put that out there for you. And Ute says it was great seeing you uh, at Tom's as well. And I appreciate that. And we, we have a lot of fun at Tom's Butt Camp. And I hope all of you can make it out there one of these days because, man, it's a blast. Whole weekend with Tom and me. I mean, come on. What gets any better than that? All right. Have any other questions? Get them in because my throat's starting to go. Still recovering from a massive, horrible whatever I had last week. And I really appreciate the people that sat through the Wesley Critique webinar. <laughs> where I was really, I mean, buying, I mean, it was horrible. And uh, I'm still recovering from that. Joanne says, uh, question, Colin, how do we access the 160-page ebook you mentioned that we all get tonight? I'm mailing it out, actually, to everyone, Joanne, tomorrow. Yeah, I didn't have a way to access it, really, that was convenient without people leaving the GoToWebinar and, like, going to a page and trying to download it. And uh, I just thought it would be easier if I just sent it to you, you know? That's a little bit of uh, copywriting rule number seven, uh, uh, cater to people's inherent laziness and hold their hand. So instead of making you go over and get the ebook, which you might not do, I'm just going to send it to you because I know that it's just so much easier. So um, everything I do has always got a little bit of copywriting in it. It's funny, you know, dating, you know, everything. Um, even jumping people out. It's always something. But, yeah, you can get to see a lot of this in action. And, actually, you'll see, you've probably seen, noticed a lot of copywriting techniques that I just showed you tonight. I've actually infiltrated into the webinar closes and some of the content and some of the conversation I'm having with you. And uh, call it NLP or whatever you want to say. It's just good old-fashioned emotional stuff. Uh, Abby says it's 10, oh, 10 or 3 here in Newfoundland. Time for my beauty sleep. Good night. All right, Abby, I'm going to send you your prize tomorrow. Thanks for being here, everybody. And uh, and the black book, Clara May, she says, uh, and the black book. Um, I don't know what that means. You can, I'll send you a link to the autoresponder program if you want to purchase that, uh, Clara May. If you, and uh, I'll give you that link in the replay. Sophie says, what and where are these camps you mentioned? They're in Virginia Beach about every 60 days at Tom's Internet Marketing School in Virginia Beach, and you can fly out here and get a hotel and stay for the weekend and we have a small intimate group of 30 or 40 people, or less than that, maybe sometimes 15 or 20, and we teach you a whole high-intensive Internet marketing with video marketing and social media marketing and all my copywriting training, and Tom himself sit there and teaches all his secrets over a two-day period. It's called Tom Antion's Butt Camp. You can actually Google that and get all the information for that. Doug says, Colin, will your PowerPoint slides be available? Yes, I'll be able to, you'll be able to download these slides along with watching the replay. And I'll have the link to the ebook for the replay too. Um, of course, I didn't really want to send that out to everybody, but I will. Um, but I'll probably just email it to only the people that were live because that was, I want to keep my promise. And uh, Clara May says, is the black book available? Yes, it is. And I'll send you a link personally to that. I have your email, Clara May, and I would glad to send you a link where you can see more information about the little black book of autoresponders, which has been extremely popular. All right, I'm going to have to get going here. It's been an I can't believe you guys have stuck with me this long. My voice is starting to go. Vicky's starting to nudge me like, let's go do something. Um, so we're going to get out of here. And uh, did you enjoy this one, Vicky? Loved it. Okay, she always loved it. She'd say that no matter what. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. If you have any more questions about anything, about the workshops or anything I went over tonight, watch the slides tomorrow. Send me an email at videopoweratlive.com. And I'll answer your questions and I'll, uh, for as long as it takes. So I never let an email go and answer it. Everyone knows that. And I pride myself on that. So you'll have me at your beck and call. So I'm going to get out of here. And um, I'm glad you guys were here and have a great night. Finish up your glasses of wine. I'm going to finish up mine. And we're going to have a great time. And I'll see you on the next webinar.